So despite resigning and doing this ABC interview, Nathan Wade is not out of hot water. Why? Because today, the House Judiciary Committee is asking him to come sit with them and meet with them for an interview. They're also asking him to finally produce records in response to a request they initially sent in January, which Bonnie Willis instead answered for him. And we are going to run through that letter. So you can see here, May 9th, that is today, to Nathan Wade at his law firm. Dear Mr. Wade, the Committee on the Judiciary continues to conduct oversight of politically motivated, so don't make that a drinking game, guys, continues to conduct oversight of politically motivated prosecutions by state and local officials, as well as oversight of the Fulton County DA's attorney's office, receipt, and use of federal grant funds. And this is really because it's federal grant funds. This is what's going to give the committee jurisdiction to have oversight over this. As part of our oversight, we, the committee, sent you a letter on January 12th, 2024, requesting six specific categories of documents relating to your former employment with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. On January 26th, 2024, the committee received an unsolicited letter from none other than Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie T. Willis responding on your behalf to the committee's letter. Ms. Willis's letter, however, refused to provide the committee with any responsive information. This seems like a pattern. Joycelyn Wade wants to subpoena Fannie Willis. No, not going to be responsive. Not going to happen. Public defenders want to send records requests to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office to ask why their client has been sitting without an indictment for more than the 45-day window. One public defender did this for their client who was sitting for more than 400 days without an indictment. What did they get? And the ACLU sent these, these on their behalf, actually. What did the ACLU get from the Fulton County? Sorry. We don't have the responsive documents. So once again, <laughs> there is a pattern of this. We don't have the responsive documents. We'll send you an unsolicited letter, but we won't respond to what you're asking for. And by the way, I did a video on the ACLU and Bard Business suing the Fulton County District Attorney's Office and Fannie Willis for being non-responsive about these people sitting without indictments, sitting in the jail that's falling apart without indictments. So you can check that video out. I'll link to it in the description. But back to this letter here, they go on to say, to date, you, Nathan Wade, have failed to comply with or even respond to the committee's request. We write to reiterate these requests and ask again for your voluntary cooperation with our oversight. Why? There are serious concerns about your role in the politically motivated prosecution initiated by Ms. Willis against President Donald J. Trump. You have reportedly, quote, profited significantly from Ms. Willis's prosecution with unsealed court filings alleging that you have been paid, quote, almost $700,000 from the Fulton County District Attorney's Office since May of 2022 alone. Now, we've heard about this. This is coming from a lot of Ashley Merchant. That's Michael Roman's attorney. A lot of her public records requests. There's an element of this that's extra important. We're going to talk about it towards the end of this video. The committee understands that Ms. Willis reportedly compensated you and financed her politically motivated prosecution using a mixture of taxpayer funds, possibly including part of that federal grant, that $14.6 million federal grant that her office received from the Department of Justice between 2020 and 2023. While receiving taxpayer funds, you apparently coordinated with the Democrats in Washington, D.C., quote, quietly meeting with staff from the partisan January 6th committee, which allowed you to review information it had gathered. And you had two separate meetings with the Biden White House, including with President Biden's White House counsel. Now, why is this important? They attached that January letter to this letter that they're sending today. And so while Nathan Wade was billing for all of this time that he was meeting with these, these committees and with the Department of Justice, Politico had reported that the same information that Nathan Wade was getting access to from the January 6th committee was withheld from other law enforcement entities and even other members of Congress. So Nathan Weed, for whatever reason, had special access to certain documents via the January 6th committee. That's why they're saying that's problematic. If we go back up to today's May 9th letter, they're about to go over why we have jurisdiction over this, but there's one important, they're gonna go through a list of reasons they're doing this and they're all mostly gonna be in one sentence, but one thing gets its own sentence, so pay attention. Pursuant to Rule 10 of the Rules of House of Representatives, the committee has jurisdiction over the Justice Department programs and criminal justice matters in the U.S. As we have repeatedly explained to Ms. Willis, that's snark, <laughs> that's a little snarky, the committee is considering potential legislative reforms, establishing clear guidelines, outlining the permissible use of federal grant funds, 
creating penalties for unlawfully misusing federal grant funds, constructing stringent automatic audit requirements for department grant managers, or modifying eligibility requirements pertaining to grant recipients that misuse federal funds. That was a list altogether. But there's one extra item that gets its own sentence. Additionally, the committee has considered legislation broadening the existing statutory right of removal of certain criminal cases from state court to federal court as a remedy against politicized prosecutions by popularly, not just meaning haha and popular, but people are electing. The population is electing state or local prosecutors. The requested material is necessary to advance our oversight and inform these legislative reforms. So in short, where a local election could come into play, perhaps it's better if we take this prosecution out of that local entity's hands and we move it over to a federal court. That way we preserve the right to a fair trial for the defendant or defendants in this case. So moving on, they say here, accordingly, we reiterate that the request of our January 12th, 2024 letter enclosed for your convenience and ask that you produce this material as soon as possible, but no later than May 16th, 2024. Further, the committee requires your testimony to discuss the subject matter of our related requests. To facilitate this request, they're going to say contact us or have your attorney do it promptly. So then they sign off and they do attach this January 12th, 2024 letter, which that was back when Ashley Merchant had pulled these public records. There were, it was all this stuff about the payments. Fonnie Willis isn't cooperating and we need you to produce, you know, some information because we're trying to get clarity here. Now, what are they trying to get clarity on? One thing is that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office reportedly compensated you using a concoction of commingled funds, including monies confiscated or seized by the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. It's a public seizure account. It's a confiscated funds account. That's money seized from individuals that are arrested. And also monies directed from Fulton County's general fund. The committee has information that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office received approximately $14.6 million in grants from the Department of Justice between 2020 and 2023. And given the enormous legal fees you've billed the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, there are open questions about whether federal funds were used by the District Attorney's Office to finance your prosecution. And so what did they want to request with this, this January letter that Fonnie Willis responded to, Nathan Wade to this date has still not responded to, and now on May 9th, they're saying, the committee's saying, hey, you got to respond and you got to meet with us. They want all documents and communications in possession between or among the district attorney's office, including yourself and the U.S. Department of Justice and its components, not limited to including but not limited to special counsel Jack Smith, referring or relating to Fulton County District Attorney's Office investigation of Donald Trump. All documents and communications. And this last sentence is pretty much going to be the same, but they also want all documentations and communications between the DA and himself and the executive office of the president. They also want all documents and communications between the DA himself and the partisan January 6th select committee. They also want all notes, memoranda documents, or other material in your possession referring to or relating to all meetings, conferences, phone calls, or other interactions with the DOJ, president, or January 6th committee. And in this part, all invoices including credit card statements and individualized reimbursement requests submitted by you or your law partners to the district attorney's office relating to its investigation into Donald Trump. And finally, all contracts and financial arrangements between you and the district attorney's office relating to its investigation into Donald Trump. So he was supposed to provide that by January 26th, and instead they got a response from Fannie Willis. So that's a recap of what we're at with this letter from the committee, but why do I care about it so much? First, Nathan Wade's clearly not out of hot water, even though he stepped down and he did that interview. It's not over for him. Because in that letter, they were asking him to voluntarily respond. What does that imply? The second reason I think it's a big deal, and I'll link to this video in the description, it's a 10-minute video I did breaking down the clerical errors, according to the district attorney's office, because they're claiming clerical errors, and civil forfeiture, those funds that are seized from individuals when they're arrested in Fulton County. There were multiple payments made to Nathan Wade that totaled six figures, you know, several months where he was getting paid thirty or $35,000 by the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. And when Ashley Merchant made those public records requests, and I believe uh, Joyce Lynn's attorney had also made requests for the same records. So it wasn't just Ashley Merchant looking for these payments, information on this, this payment, these payments going to Nathan Wade. 
But when Ashley Merchant looked at them, she noticed something funky. They were being paid from George's confiscated funds account. Multiple payments being notated as having been paid by this confiscated funds account. You're not supposed to do that with funds from this account. That's not what that's meant to be used for. And I did this video breaking it down on the inconsistencies and how their chief operating officer and the spokesperson that tried to clean it up. On the screen is just one quote from it. I'll link to the full video in the description, but this last sentence here, the chief operating officer said, hey, it was just a clerical error. And I know it was a clerical error because he was pressed back. They said, well, how could it be a clerical error so many times? How do you keep making clerical error mistakes this way? His response to that pushback was to double down and say, well, that money would not have come from the forfeiture account. The funds in the Georgia confiscated funds account are always kept low and would never be able to make payments of over $30,000 a month to a lawyer. You can debunk that right away because they seized more than $100,000 from Jeffrey Williams, young thug, who's currently sitting in another, what I would argue, is a highly politicized prosecution over in the YSL trial. So that's just one example that on its face, this, oh, we would never be able to have enough funds in that account to pay $30,000 to a lawyer like Nathan Waite. It says on paper, you did so more than once and you're claiming it's a clerical error because you wouldn't have that amount of money sitting there. But you would seize, never, never was their word. Always kept low and would never be able to make payments. Of over $30,000. But just one quick example, one Google search, you find out they've had more than 100000 sitting in there because of Jeffrey Williams, young thug. So I will link to that video in the description if you guys want to check that out. Other than that, guys, what do you think about this letter that's being filed? My thing is Nathan Wade put his foot down. He referred to himself in the third person in that ABC interview and said, this is Nathan Wade speaking for himself. But here we have a letter that's basically like, Bro, we need you to speak for yourself instead of Fani sending us a letter for you. Like, answer. Come talk to us. What's going on? Other than that, you know, I do have a big issue with civil civil forfeiture, civil seizure. I think it's a big issue that goes beyond Fulton County. Uh, I think it's a civil rights violation in most instances. Uh, I usually don't think it meets the bar for the justification, but there's not much oversight of it. And last time when we did that video, we had several people commenting that they have they have themselves or know someone personally that that, you know, they get pulled over, their wallet gets seized, they get out, no charges, they're not indicted, they're acquitted. Maybe they're indicted, but then they end up being acquitted. They never get their cash back that was taken from them. They never get back certain belongings that were taken from them. It's a big problem nationwide, not just Fulton County, um, but anything and anything at all that you can think of. The floor is yours, you guys. Share your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. I cover a lot of other stuff outside of Fonnie Willis, but I try to do it in a really interesting and thoughtful way and hope you guys will come join the discussion over there. So if you feel so inclined, subscribe for more. Say hey in the comments and make sure you take care. Have a good one.